is not to make you a you know sort of ethical human being that's up to you right you do what you want but even if you don't want to be an ethical human being other people do care about that and at some point in your you know in your working career your boss is gonna propose to do something and gonna say uh, hey should we do this anybody have seen any objections and if you cannot say to them well I mean I'm fine with it but here's gonna here's a problem other people are gonna perceive um, if you let that go by guess who they're going to blame when everything blows up in their face that's right you so even if you don't care about being ethical yourself which I hope you do but you know want to talk to everybody so even if you don't care about that yourself well it, there's still very good reason for you to you know pay attention to this class and try to figure out kind of what the rest of us are talking about so like I said we're gonna talk about uh, ethical considerations most of them having to do with um, uh, big data um, stuff like that uh, personal privacy things along those lines we're gonna start though in a little bit of a different place but I think in a place that will make sense as we go along so here's just the real quick outline um, so we're gonna start with something that's completely unrelated to the rest of the stuff we're gonna do we're gonna talk about uh, basically something that comes out of game theory uh, we're gonna talk about the tragedy of the commons and the reason we're gonna talk about that is to just kind of show you some you know kind of flip your head a little bit right get you to think about some ordinary decisions in a very different kind of way um, but also to point out the importance of things like incentives and the point out the importance of having things like ethical values in making sure that you know people are able to get along with each other so we're gonna start off with the tragic commons and then we're gonna talk about um, autonomy which is kind of the main thing of value autonomy is just like I'll usually we'll talk a lot more about this later but auton being autonomous basically means being the boss of yourself being you know sort of a fully developed person who kind of has control of their life insofar as any of us ever do um, and that's going to be the mi big thing that is going to sort of come up throughout the class is sort of when are people are autonomous how do we respect people's autonomy and still try to do the work of business um, from there, then we'll get into the more directly uh, business related stuff. We're going to talk about uh, first, I th think it's in this order, <laughs> should have looked, uh, advertising, you know, sort of issues that come up in, in you know, crafting ads and doing marketing, uh, sales techniques, you know, ethical issues around sort of how you approach sales, where, where the limits are in, uh, you know, in salesmanship, where the, the limits between sort of like what you're you have to disclose to a customer lie and you know there's never going to be like a, a concrete you know here's how you do it answer that's not the point the point is to get the hang of how to think about these kind of issues so that when you in encounter them in your own working career you'll have some tools that will help you deal with that uh, so after the sales stuff then we're going to get into more of the sort of uh you know big data type stuff so first thing we're going to talk about there is um a sort of a kind of question you might not think about uh, which is what does it even mean to own data about a person right and what does that imply in terms of the duty of the people that have the data so every company you know is snarfling up as much data about all of us as they can um, and that's posing some real significant issues but I think everybody generally agrees that if you agree for a company to have your data then well it's theirs but we're gonna start off by thinking about you know what does that actually mean from that we're going to talk about how the companies get your data so remember so just now I said well the uh, you agreed that the company can you know so you go to a website you click I consent that you can track my browsing history while I'm using this page blah 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 when is that actually an agreement right there's you know for just to make it bring it up really simply right I would bet you have never read the entire terms and conditions of basically anything that you agreed to and you know nor should you right those are for lawyers basically but it poses a real question did you really know what you were getting into when do you really know what you're getting into when is your consent to have your data snarfled up when is that actually um, legitimate from there we're going to talk about some of the harms that can come about and sort of why theories about you know not just like somebody could use your social security number to you know open accounts in your name or uh, you know open a credit card in your name and then you're screwed financially maybe there's some things about privacy that are still harmful 
but you know don't even don't we don't have to sort of get to the level of like somebody's taking your life savings so we'll talk about that and then from there you know so we'll talk after we talk about how people can be hurt by um, uses of their data we're going to talk about a brand new kind of thing and brand new sort of way in which people can be hurt that way, which is um, algorithms and other sorts of automated decision making and the ways that those can harm a person but more importantly how we deal with the question of responsibility because it does seem to be true in some cases that the you know when a when a person is harmed by the use of of, of her data that in some cases and it was an algorithm that was making the choice that caused the harm and maybe and with modern sort of uh machine learning type approaches it's literally impossible for the engineers who design the algorithm to know exactly how it's going to behave and so if you don't know what's how something's going to work then you kind of can't be responsible for what you don't know about right so it seems like the algorithm in some of these cases is actually the agent it's actually the thing doing the harm and that poses some real questions about our standard understandings of moral responsibility. You know, when we can blame somebody for hurting somebody else. So that's where we're going to get to. That's uh, eight different chunks that the semester is going to be broken up to. Um, and I hope I'm going to try the best I can to make this as enjoyable as possible. Um, welcome. <laughs>